everyone, it's Sean and welcome back to my channel. When we left, uh, last left off on this restoration project concerning our uh, volt ohm meter here, uh, we addressed the resistors, replacing several of them on these placards. And uh, let me just say that was quite a bit of work in and of itself. It took uh, several hours to get done, including um, using some enameled wire to rebuild this uh, one resistor right here. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, set this aside for the time being. And uh, is, we're going to move over into uh, some main components within this volt ohm meter itself, such as the dial uh, or the meter, our, um, our knobs and uh, uh, variable resistor here. I kind of want to get several things cleaned up. We're going to take it apart and, and clean up and inspect quite a bit of things. I don't think these wires are going to need to be replaced at all. They have a, a, a fabric shielding on them and they seem to be in pretty good condition. Uh, other than the fact that uh, you know they're not incredibly clean, which I wouldn't assume something of this with this age would necessarily be pristine. Um, so that's kind of the game plan. Um, I want to address the things on here and also want to address our, our rectifier as well. I uh, removed it from here, but we'll have to loosen up this nut that you see right here. And then I think should be able to pull this out and uh, remove what I think is the selenium rectifier. And then we're going to use uh, two diodes to kind of rebuild our rectifier. Um, I'll give good consideration of what diodes I'm going to use, but for the most part, it's just going to be an experimentation, you know. Uh, I, I don't know for certain what diodes would be the very best to replace this with, but, you know, based upon the voltage rating of uh, several things under test, if uh, you were to use this multimeter, uh, I would at least want to use a diode that is, um, you know, rated for at least 600 volts, if not more, or several diodes, two, to be exact. But uh, I think uh, around the first video, I say, you know, I can't see this going beyond three, vi uh, three videos. But man, let me tell you, I've, I, uh, I'm, I'm going to eat my words on that, and I'm not going to try to crunch everything possible down into three videos. Uh, this is definitely, I've been off a little bit more than I'm, I'm willing to chew, to be honest with you. Um, this is quite a bit of work, and uh, to can try to record everything, condense it down into just three videos is, is not going to be worthwhile. We'll get through several things on this video. We still have to address the the um, actual case, the chassis as well. And uh, I imagine that's going to be quite a bit of work too. But, uh, you know, if you if you enjoy this restoration series so far, please let me know by, uh, by liking this video. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Uh, I do restorations uh, and repair just general electronics and uh, home appliances and stuff like that. Uh, not just because I enjoy doing it for the old YouTube channel as well as some silly videos like repairing my kids' toys and stuff like that. But uh, I do it as a business as well. So if you're interested in, and you need somebody to, to restore something of yours that maybe has sentimental value or is an antique in nature via radio or audio equipment, anything of that nature, uh, seek me out on Google Sites. going to have my uh, business P.O. Box address. It's going to take you to a form that you can fill out. It's even going to have my Gmail and business phone number. Uh, by all means, reach out to me and we can discuss uh, what you're looking, uh, looking to get done. But uh, with all that said, um, without further ado, I'm just going to... I think what we'll tackle first is our actual meter here. Let me go ahead and work on getting it out of out of this uh, you know, subframe assembly or whatever you want to call it and uh, see if we can't get it cleaned up. Now, even though um, <clears throat> we're replacing uh, a lot of the resistors off over here to the left and stuff like that, and, and we're going to rebuild the rectifier, um, you, know, there, you know, it could all be for naught if this meter is uh, broken inside, then there's nothing else that I can do, but... You know, it's at least worthwhile in my, in my head to, to do this as a practice. And then, I mean, who knows? Maybe it will be functional in the end. Um, probably a lot of you have seen some mistakes already that I've made. And, 
and that I haven't realized. And if you if you have, just you know, leave the leave it in the comment section. But um, sure, let me uh, let's move on to uh, getting this replaced, or at least taken out, so we can start cleaning it up. I wanted to pause for a second while cleaning up this and and show something to you um, you probably notice this little guy right here well what this is is basically a set screw or a zero cal adjust, adjustment on the uh, the meter itself now part of this screw is broken uh, so you can't really set it anymore uh, with a screwdriver which is what you would use. Um, now, what it does is inside of uh, this casing right here, we have a little post. You might be able to make that out here in the video. I'm kind of touching it right there. But uh, this post is only on one side of uh, this bottom circle that you see in here. Let's see if I can get it into the light better if you can notice that at all uh let's see can we get an overhead light going there we go actually let me there we go that should be better all right well hopefully you can see that this post is only on one side over here and as it spins it will you know, it's going to turn. The position of that post will be corresponding to the position that this right here is turned. Now, what that post actually does, and I'm going to be extremely careful with this guy right here, is it sits right in the middle of this fork, okay? Now, I believe the principle is while a current is applied uh, through here, you have a uh, these uh, brass or metal or whatever uh, metal material this is made out of, you additionally have your armature and what kind of looks like a stator or motor with a, with wire wrapping on the outside. And as that current's allowed through, it's going to turn this arm sitting right here. 
But uh, you can see even when I just get something kind of close to it, that arm moves. Now, I think this is good based off of previously uh, when we first tested it in video one. Uh, it being able to move, but I want to show you something. This is something that uh, you need to be very careful of. So here goes that that fork that I was telling you about. But uh, it, you can just make underneath it a kind of spring-loaded uh, device or spring sitting inside of here, okay? Now, that spring is wrapped several times. It's almost like a, a clock spring. But you can see from the other side how it's bent and it goes to this top part right here. Okay. Of this uh, tuning fork. And as I move this, uh, this fork, you can see it pulls on the spring. Now, whether or not that spring is good or bad, uh, I don't know. I'm not... I wouldn't think that it's supposed to have a bend like that, but uh, I'm not smart enough on uh, these devices to be able to state otherwise. However, if I... Can we zoom out a bit? Okay. So right now we're below zero. But uh, as I turn this, okay... You can see that that adjusts this armature and now it's moved further upwards. Actually, let's get this out of the way. All right. And as I turn it back, you can see it moves back down. So you want to be very careful with this. That's the obviously something that's going to be extremely fragile not something that uh, you would want to break okay um, so that's kind of why I've set it off to the side essentially getting it out of the way while I'm cleaning this because I don't want to mess with that too much uh, my concern is that uh, I ruin this meter if it's not already bad but uh, this is starting to clean up okay. I'm going to finish cleaning it and uh, get it back together, and then we can move on to other things. So we took our dial here, and then, as you saw towards the end, I took a little bit of uh, B7000 and put around the rim after getting it cleaned up, mostly because there is a gap here that allows, uh, I noticed that the uh, rubbing alcohol is able to seep through, so I kind of want to weather, wanted to weatherproof it a little bit. Uh, it might not be all that uh, great looking, right now per se but uh you know once that glue uh flashes over and, and gets hard what i'll do is i'll probably take the pointy end of this and just kind of cut out the excess and remove it or something along those lines whatever i method i choose though i have to be very careful because this is glass it's not plastic so i have to be extremely careful with that what I would like to do right now, though, is uh, now turn my attention to our potentiometer here and get this off and get it cleaned up. Uh, versus just recording the entire cleaning section, 
I think what I'll do is just uh, demonstrate the removal uh, real time. You can see that we have a uh, screw that's going to hold the knob in. So this is the first thing that's that's going to need to get removed. See, so you, you can see that screw sitting right there. A lot of old equipment would have uh, an Allen key or uh, basically a set screw like this right here to hold in the knobs. And we don't want to lose that. <laughs> That's I guarantee I don't have any more. But you can see just how dirty it is uh, right off the get-go from there. And then it also appears as though uh, the orientation of this doesn't matter. Okay, cool. So it just goes on any which way. Uh, also appears that we have uh, two uh, nuts. Uh, probably need to remove this one. That one right there could probably stay on. Um, but when we uh, pull this out backwards, we'll we'll take a another look at it. We'll move this off a little bit to the side. Let's see if I can find a socket that will fit that. I'm not sure I have one in my office that big. And as uh, luck would have it, <laughs> I definitely do not. Let me uh, let me see if I can get a socket for it. I'd rather use a socket than you know just put pliers or something on there and and, and turn on it because I don't want to to ruin uh, this nut at all. I'd rather not uh, you know taper off the edge or something like that uh, and torquing across it want to keep it as as pristine as possible so i went fishing around my my drawer and found a my uh craftsman said i had pretty close by it's so, uh what half inch drive yeah it should work just fine okay and let's make sure we can get this off Appropriately, here is as though this the uh, stem on here is just a wee bit too long to get it on there with a socket attached, but with the ratchet attached, but should be able to do like this and get it loose. All right, just a couple of turns is all that's really needed. And the rest should be able to come off by hand. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, super grimy, super dirty. Appears as though we have at least two spacers. We got that washer there. Looks like a plastic spacer. And is that one more spacer? Yes, it is. Two spacers and a washer. And let me set this aside. And this should be able to slide out. And I can see that we still have uh, two spacers, a washer, and a, and a nut on this side as well. Oh no, looks like I knocked off a, a post for our battery. It was soldered on right there, so that's going to have to get fixed. I think what I'll do instead of fighting with that is I'm going to have to desolder this and uh, then pull it out. So I'll uh, I'll get that desoldered and uh, pulled out off camera. So I was actually able to finish taking it out without desoldering those two wires. But um, and clean it up. I sprayed a little bit of QD cleaner down into it, uh, worked it back and forth, and then took a no meter between these two uh, contact points down in there uh, to ensure that it's still functional. And yes, it's still a potentiometer. But I uh, need to get this uh, wire back soldered onto this post right here. Let's see. That might be the right size. Well, just about. This type of insulation that they used on 
these wires is by far some of the worst and best insulation I've ever had the pleasure of working with. A lot of these uh, terminal posts, I mean, the solder is relatively oxidized. So, debating on uh, going through and just adding fresh solder to get rid of that oxidation. Heat it from the top and heat from the bottom. To be able to get some more solder down in there that way. All right, I'm gonna let it cool off. Appears to be cooled off. And yeah, we've got a good solid connection that time. What I'm gonna do is uh, go around and just uh, touch up all these points on here. So they'll pretty oxidized and get some fresh solder down on them. I like that one there. This one here. Quite a few points that, uh, termination points that a little relatively oxidized and then uh, one other thing I did is I went ahead and cleaned up inside of here quite a bit as well although it might not look like it from the standpoint of uh, what you are viewing yeah that's gonna have to be the method heat from the bottom and Put solder in from the top. All right, it's going to take me a while to get through all this, so I can do this part off camera. While off camera, after, uh, touching up several of these soldering points, what I went ahead and did is I put a little barkeeper's friend and in water into a container and then with uh, some q-tips went through and just polished off all these contact points you see here and then throughout each layer underneath. Now barkeeper's friend is going to remove that oxidation uh, however it will leave a film so you can't just use it and, and leave it. You can't, that's not the appropriate method. Uh, so what I did afterwards is I used some QD uh, CRC contact cleaner and just sprayed as best as possible while rotating the knob as well uh, to clean out uh, every contact point I could. Because what you have essentially is uh, this flange right here know if I can get this onto camera but uh, this flange kind of opens up and then there's a top and bottom layer Actually, let's rotate it and perhaps you could see that right here it'll focus but there's a top and bottom layer and it will go over the top part will obviously sit on top the bottom part should touch underneath each of these points and there's one of these on every layer of the board as a matter of fact you can see another one just right here uh, now they do make these like fine tooth files that are very like wafer thin that you could run in between them to clean those uh, parts as well but I don't have one uh, so, I, and I also didn't have any, um, what's that stuff that's really popular? Deoxit uh, to spray or use down in there. Uh, so that was the best I could think of to do for now. And hopefully it works and hopefully I won't have to take this apart because that's going to be a nightmare. 
and clean every single contact in there. That would definitely be a nightmare. Not something I would, I want to do at all. But uh, got everything cleaned up back together. So I suppose now I want to focus on cleaning this guy right here up. This is obviously our uh, knob for selector switch, essentially. And there's another screw in here. Now this one is indented. You see it's flat right here at the bottom. Uh, so it can only go one direction. It should only go one direction with our uh, set pin or screw going, going against the bottom of our shaft right here. So this should be relatively easy to clean up. It's just a simple some IPA and uh, wiping it down but get it as clean as possible you can see how dirty that is already it's pretty bad now it appears that if we need to take out this bottom half, there is a uh, kind of like a C-clamp washer sitting here. And you can undo that C-clamp and then remove this nut. And this, then this entire assembly should pull out along with our, uh, well, for the most part, our wiring loom. If you can get it out that way, you probably will need to desolder all those points. Again, one of the reasons why I just kind of don't want to do that. And I'm not, and then hopefully I won't have to. Hopefully we can get this thing put back together pretty well. Or get get it put back together and it will just work. But uh, who's willing to make a bet on if that would be the case? If you think it will, just leave that down in the comment section. All right. I feel like that's good enough. So we're going to put this uh, about as north, true north as possible. Should be able to screw it back down. There we go. Not much to that. Well, there we go. That's going to be this being cleaned up for the most part. I'm probably not going to re-spray this face or try to redo any of this. I don't mind that patina at all. It's on the, the face of this. Definitely want to keep it clean, though. I'm willing to believe that some of this uh, nasty stuff that's coming off. I think whoever owned this in the past might have been a smoker. Usually what that yellowish staining is, is cigarette staining, tar staining, smoke staining. And then probably some of this is paint coming off as well. Which, uh, kind of want to question given the age. Is there a lead in the paint? I don't have a lead test kit with me. But, uh, what's the likelihood of that? Probably pretty high. Probably, again, I should probably be wearing gloves. But, uh, there we go. I think this is going to do it for now means that uh should now work on this uh, rectifier when I look at this uh, at our schematic here uh, for the selenium rectifier I basically see two diodes um, and essentially the rectified DC is at the 
where our two cathodes meet in the middle here of this uh, selenium rectifier. So looking at the front of our uh, volt ohm meter, the highest AC measurement is 500 volts. So I'm gonna keep that in mind. Again, this is a bit of experimentation because I imagine uh, you know, with an older selenium rectifier, you're gonna have a more significant voltage drop than you would with modern silicon diodes. So it's potential that um, the value of our uh, resistor here might have to be increased uh, greater than 900 or I might have to add some additional resistance in circuit to, to drop the rectified DC all depending on how it displays on the glass but um, yeah so just a couple things to keep in mind like I said uh, we're going to replace with some modern uh, selenium, uh, silicone diodes get rid of the selenium uh, rectifier selenium uh, component right and then, uh, you know, again, it's going to be a bit of uh, experimentation while I need to add additional resistance or not. So it kind of is what it is. <clears throat> so I think what I'm going to go with is uh, probably this 1 in 5, 4, 0, 6 uh, rectifier diode rated for 3 amps at 600 volts. Uh, I think that's what I'll end up going with. I'll get grab two of those out of this box. Uh, but for starters, kind of need to take this apart. Um, I'll be completely honest with you. I've never worked on something like this before. And although I have the basic foundations to kind of understand what's going on here, such as, uh, you know, probably have to end up using uh, Ohm's Law to determine uh, additional resistance needed in this circuit uh, you know I, I've never worked on something like this before so it's gonna be rather interesting for me to experiment with this a bit I mean at the very least getting something on the glass after during video one not seeing anything show up on the glass is, is gonna be a win in my book I mean you, you kinda got the needle to move that was about that it uh it appears that uh well we got a retaining washer as well and there's all this silly wax that's everywhere too probably should move the mic a tad bit closer to where i'm at but, uh how are we going to get this out of here? I feel like these things were originally crammed in here and then not much, uh, not designed to be taken back out. I'm kind of worried of breaking a wire and not being able to figure out, well, it will take me time, but uh, I'll have to figure out how they go back in. I can see two resistors right here on this side. So how does this come out? That is a key. Well, other than uh, boring y'all watching me fiddle around with this, uh, I'll pause the video and, and we'll come back once I got this figured out. Okay, so I've kind of gotten it apart now and what I actually had to do was uh, snip the the legs going to this uh, resistor that's wound and was put here you had on one side this uh, red wire uh, on the other side another red wire but you can see our two mega ohm resistors the base of which Going to these pins here, going to the anode of our selenium diode, diodes, the cathode output going to the uh, bottom pin over here. But, uh, so what I did is I kind of just mapped things out on the paper so I have a, and took photos so I have a better understanding of what I'm seeing here versus on the uh, schematic. And I just want to 
measure some things real quick. So, uh, 865 ohms. Uh, I think the diagram said 900 ohms. So that's within 5%, not within one. We could potentially replace it with uh, this 900 ohm half watt uh, resistor here made by Vichy, I think. Uh, I don't remember. I do know it had some. But given that this is kind of an experiment, I mean, we might have to change the value, so I'm not sure I'm going to use that now. Um, let's check these resistors that we have here. Now, on the diagram, I believe it said 2 meg ohm. So, what, what do we actually have? However, the uh, the bands on here are red, black, red, and silver tolerance, which indicates 2K, not 2 meg. And yeah, we're right about 2K. One closer than the other. So is there a, a mistake on the diagram? And it appears to be so. I mean, look right there. Two meg is, is what, it's, what it's showing. So that must be a mistake on the diagram. And I don't believe, I wouldn't believe that these were swapped out with a lower value. This looks all original to me. So I think it's safe to assume that the, uh, the schematic is incorrect in this regard. Okay. I am uh, interjecting here. Again, coming from the future, having learned something new. And, uh, and, and thankfully, I, uh, I watched, uh, was watching a video over on Mr. Carlson's lab. By the way, if, if you want knowledge on vintage radio equipment, okay, uh, vintage audio equipment, uh, that is the channel to go to, in my opinion. Uh, Mr. Carlson, just a wealth of years of experience in, in this area, uh, and, and the things he sh he shares is like, oh man, why why was I not able to to to, to think this through appropriately? But um, anyways, he mentioned over in one of his videos, and the reason why I'm interjecting at this point because I I I'm thinking to myself, well, the the schematics shows two M, and in modern schematics that would be uh, an abbreviation for mega ohm. But that is not the case in vintage uh, electronics of this era. That uh, that M actually corresponds to uh, kilo ohms. So we're talking about two kilo ohms uh, resistor resistors. And so I wouldn't know this if I had not just you know uh, as much as I tried to make. Uh, good content for my channel. I also take the time and by the way, this is why I don't hide uh, The channels that I'm subscribed to right you can see them. I don't hide them because uh, As much as I know there's always information out there from other people uh, Who've been in the these industries. There's always something to learn. Okay, and so I don't hide those other channels I subscribe to because I want them open and available for everybody here to see if you're on this path of learning right that uh that you're not just coming to my channel and saying oh uh sean here at hfr that's the channel to go to i'm probably not <laughs> to be honest with you i have 20 years of experience in, in in this industry right but that doesn't mean that i know everything and yes i am prone to mistakes uh there's just so much that uh that you consume over a lifetime that you forget a lot. And then secondly, there's just so much more that you just don't know. But anyways, uh, Mr. Carlson's lab, he, he identified uh, that this actually represented uh, 2K versus 2 mega ohms, right? Uh, and he explained the reason for that, but that was just something that was common in that era of uh, when these schematics were developed and what the engineers uh, designed on those schematics. And I would not have known that. Because I'm not, uh, although I'm learning, you know, as I go along and re restoring vintage electronics, 
this isn't something that I've uh, spent a lifetime doing because all the things that I've worked on have been pretty much post 1950s. Uh, and so a lot of changes, industry changes, uh, would have occurred most likely. Uh, standards change, uh, design changes, uh, some concepts changes as, as uh, you know, more things are made known. Uh, that's just is what it is. Uh, so with that being said, yes, I'm, I'm thinking that the diagram is incorrect, but actually the diagram is correct per its time, okay? The time in which it was developed. I'm incorrect because I don't have an understanding of what the engineers and how they design things during that time. So if you, if you really uh, want to gain that kind of knowledge, uh, you know, I appreciate that you're following me along in these restorations, but, um, but I would encourage you to, to jump over to Mr. Carlson's lab, watch some of his videos. He goes into great length and in-depth analysis uh, and helps you to learn a lot of different things. But that being said, let's cut back over to uh, the content here. So those are actually 2K resistors. So I bought two, two meg ohm uh, resistors, but I can't use them now either. So <laughs> both of those are out. Uh, let's check our uh, rectifier here. It appears like we have a short. Let's go to diode mode, actually. Yeah, we have a short on one of those diodes. The other one's reading correctly. Let's kind of paint the picture. So it seems like half of our rectifier went bad. And that could explain, I, I think, while well, we had other resistors go way out of tolerance, get burned up, essentially. That's kind of painting the picture, I suppose. That is most definitely bad. That's going to have to get replaced. So, I have to think through how I'm going to do this. Do I want to reuse these wires that are in here, or do I want to try to cut them out. I mean, what do I do here? I'm not too sure. Uh, I'll give a good thought about it. Good think about it. Come back and let y'all know. Okay, so I kind of just worked on it, figured it out as I was going along what I wanted to do. By essentially, let's, uh, let's zoom in here a little bit. Might be too much. We're out of focus. There we go. I essentially just use the uh, existing legs of my resistors and diodes to, in, in lieu of soldering in new wires as, and the components that were previously there, like what was previously there. But uh, I was able to get our diodes stuffed in here, as well as our two 2K two ohm resistors, and that I ended up using that 900 ohm resistor that I previously considered not using and primarily because I just don't have any other type of uh, I, I don't have any other resistors at that value um, got boxes of resistors just none at that value currently in the uh, in the lab but we can uh, check them out real quick and should be able to pull their value right here on the multimeter. Looks like I've gone out of focus there. There we go. But uh, let's see what we're getting here. I'll move this to over on this side. And this should be 2K. Right. This should be 2K. Got it. This should be 900. 
Okay. And um, yeah, when you reverse this, probably. Yeah, acting like a diode. Again, acting like a diode. So we're good there. I'm pretty happy with that. And uh, hopefully this works fine. And now I got it back in uh, actual volt ohm meter. It cleaned up relatively nice uh, as well. I used the same heat gun Q-tip wipe off the the wax method I did with the uh, the placards with all the resistors on it. But uh, yeah, all that's back in, including. Uh, you know, our uh, actual meter here as well. I'm thinking this looking pretty nicely. I'm probably going to, uh, let's move on. I'll tell you what, let's move on to the, the actual chassis for uh, just a little bit. So in order to remove the paint, I'm going to use some of this uh, Rust-Oleum aircraft remover. Probably should be wearing gloves or something, but uh, says it's fast acting. And I don't really care about uh, the patina. Now I'll probably keep that patina, but I do want to get off all the paint and get a uh, fresh coat of black paint on this. So I'm going to attempt to remove the paint, the old, this old paint on it, and then uh, go from there. As far as what else I can do, we'll see how this works out. Oh man, spent hours on this stripping paint, cleaning, stripping paint, cleaning, and uh, yeah, much to my surprise, there's a lot more rust than I initially assumed would be on here. So we're gonna have to do a bit of sanding. Uh, you know, at first I, I I still haven't even gotten all the paint off. Underneath that black paint was this lovely or darker, kind of looks brighter now, but original green paint that was on this. Uh, super, there's no way around it. I'm gonna have to get a wire wheel or something and and just get across this and try to get out a lot of this rust, but. <laughs> The, we actually have a patent on this, made in USA, that, uh, that came through. I thought that was pretty cool. That was covered up before. And the case itself, once we get it open, I believe it comes apart in two sections, and you'll see why. Come on out. You'll see why. We, I need to get a wire brush go over this but yeah, it actually comes apart but there's still quite a bit of paint in here and then at the bottom there there's just there's so much rust and I don't want to leave that rust in because it's just it's going to eat away at this box so gonna definitely gonna have to get myself a uh, you know one of those wire brushes or whatever you can stick in, uh, in, in a drill and just get in here and, and clean out as much as much as possible and then do something to try to neutralize that that rust that's down in there before i paint this back black and, and then again the same thing down in here there's a still a bit of black paint as well but i mean it did clean up pretty well uh with that paint stripper however i I want to show you this. I uncovered something here, and it might be a bit difficult to show up. But when I remove the paint, somebody has their uh, first initial and last name in here. Uh, N. Peterson. N. Peterson. So that's a that's pretty unique in, in my 
my opinion. That's uh, that's you know, you're uncovering a bit of history here. So, you know, potentially somebody around that error, or if this was, you know, hand me down later, somebody within the fam within the Peterson family. Um, made use of this full ohm meter, so I'll leave that to y'all to to make a guess there. Who N. Peterson is? I did my own Google uh, search on it. That name, World War Two era name, or and uh, came up with quite a few results. But um, obviously, you know, I live in Oklahoma, so. Um, yeah, y'all, y'all. See if you, if, uh, you know, it could be anybody. There's probably hundreds of names that start with an N or last name Peterson. But, uh, yeah, put put down in the comment section, who do you think this person was? I think that's super interesting, the things you uncover. And, I, and like I said, it was underneath that black paint, so. Somebody's personal tool that they carried around for a while. I just, I just think that's super unique. But uh, I think this is where I'm just going to go ahead and end this video. Uh, with that discovery sitting in here and, and showcasing this, I've still got quite a lot of work to do. Um, I thought I was going to fit it all into to three videos, but it's just that, that seems to be relatively impossible at this point. I'm going to have uh, many... Maybe probably a couple more hours just on this and the hours that I'm going to have to put back into soldering those placards and resistors back in but um, yeah uh, let me know in the doobly doo if you enjoyed this video uh, if you're new to the channel please consider subscribing and like the video you know all that stuff helps out with the channel growth and everything and uh, if you're into if you have vintage electronics whatever it is and you're looking to get it get a restoration done or even if not a full restoration just say get it to electrically work again uh let me know uh, business stuff is in the uh in the description there's a google site it's got my p.o box my uh business email address and, and business phone number we can work something out but uh thank you for watching I uh, appreciate you took the time out of your day to, to follow along this restoration process with me and hopefully uh, you had something that you learned or at, at least were entertained. So without further ado, take care and goodbye. Mark?